least one or two. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, sir. You can put your hand down and be seated. Well, please speak into the microphone, state your full name, and spell your last name for the record. Marlon Osborne, O-S-B-O-U-R-N-E. Good afternoon, Doctor. What is your occupation? Uh, good afternoon. My occupation is I'm an associate medical examiner at the Palm Beach County Medical Examiner's Office. Okay. Could you uh, briefly tell us about your educational background? <clears throat> I graduated from Rutgers College with a BA in biology. I then attended um, Rutgers New Jersey Medical School and got an MD degree. After that, I attended Hahnemann, H-A-H-N-E-M-A-N-N, -N, University Hospital, Drexel College of Medicine pathology program, <clears throat> after which I did a one-year fellowship at the Miami-Dade Medical Examiner's Office in Forensic Pathology. And since following that fellowship, I worked for five years at the uh, Philadelphia Medical Examiner's Office. Following those five years, I worked at the Broward County Medical Examiner's Office, and I've been at the Palm Beach County Medical Examiner's Office for three years. Okay. Are you licensed to practice medicine? Yes, I am. Where? In Florida. Okay. Uh, a member of any, uh, have any board certifications? Yes, in anatomic pathology and forensic pathology. Okay. Uh, have you, uh, how many autopsies have you performed? Uh, well over 2,500. Okay. And then of those uh, 2,500 autopsies, have you been able to determine the cause of death? Yes. And of those 2,500 approximately autopsies, how many were as a result of gunshot wounds, approximately? Um, Somewhere over two, 200, I would say. Okay. And uh, have you ever testified in a court of record as a forensic pathologist? Yes, I have. Approximately how many times? Um, well over 120 times at this okay. point. Okay. And in what courts? Um, Philadelphia, uh, Miami, Broward, Palm Beach counties. Okay. Uh, Dr. Osborne, um, did there come an occasion on Thursday, February the 15th, 2018, you performed uh, several autopsies? Yes, I did. Okay. I'd like to show you now uh, States Exhibits 22D, 22C, 22B, 22A, 21Z, 21Y, 21X. 21W and 21V, like in Victor, and ask you, Dr. Osmore, would you please take a look at these exhibits and see if you can identify them, please, sir. Yes, I can. Okay. And did you perform that autopsy on that young lady? Yes, I did. And that is Helena, Helena Ramsey? Yes, it is. Would uh, these photographs help you uh, to explain the nature of the injuries to the court and to the jury? Yes. And would these uh, exhibits, these photographs, aid you in explaining to the court and to the jury the manner and cause of death of Helena Ramsey? Yes. Okay. All right, at this time, I'd like to offer these exhibits. I think you can support the receiving, right? Yes, sir.
you. Does the defense have any objection to the admission of these photographs? Just going to incorporate all uh, grounds and arguments in the NIL 12. Thank you. Okay, over the defense objection, 21B, like Victor, will be received as 402. 21W will be received as 403. 21X, like X-ray, will be received as 404. 21Y will be received as 405. 21Z, like Zebra, will be received as 406. 22A, like Alpha, will be received as 407. 22B, like Bravo, will be received as 408. 22C, like Charlie, will be received as 409. 22D, like Delta, will be received as 410. Thank you, Your Honor. And, uh, Dr. Osborne, as the clerk is marking those exhibits, so could you tell us uh, the age, weight, and height of Helena Ramsey? If I may refer to my... Please. <laughs> Ms. Ramsey was 17 years old, and she had a height that was 66 inches and a heart 136 pounds. Okay. And I'm showing you State's Exhibit uh, 207 that's already been introduced in evidence. Recognize her? Yes. That's Helen Ramsey? Yes. Exhibit marked 402, and that's labeled H. Could you explain that for us, that wound? Yes, uh, this wound is on the back of the right side of her head. Um, it goes through the scalp, enters the, uh, fractures these uh, bones of the skull, enters the calvarium, which is where the brain is housed. It causes hemorrhages along and it's, uh, around the brain, lacerations um, and contusions to the brain, and exits um, the left side of the forehead. Okay, I'm showing you State's Exhibit Mark 403. Is that the exit wound you're talking about? Yes, it is. Okay, and uh, would that wound uh, be lethal? Yes, it would. Showing the state's exhibit marked 404. Oh, 405, I'm sorry. Can you explain what that shows? Um, this is showing um, Ms. Ramsey's left side, the left side of her face. You can see the um, previous wound described as A on the left side of the forehead. Wound D is on the lateral aspect of the left shoulder. Um, there's a wound B on the left side of the chest. And a wound C on the right side of the chest. Okay. Could you tell us about wound B? B is in boy? Yes, B, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, wound B uh, is an irregular wound on the right side of the chest that goes through the skin and pectoralis muscles and uh, fragments of a uh, projectile were recovered from within the muscles, of the pectoralis muscles. Okay. And uh, how about wound D? Wound D is an entrance wound on the lateral aspect of the left shoulder. It goes through the muscles of the 
left arm and exits on a wound that will be shown later as E on the inside of the left upper arm. Okay, and how about uh, wound C? Wound C is an irregular uh, ballistic defect um, that has a very short wound tract and no projectiles were recovered from that wound. It only goes into the superficial layers of the pectoralis muscle, just okay. under the skin. All right, and I'm showing you now space exhibit 406. 406 shows the exit wound, E, that corresponds to D, the entrance wound previously described on her left shoulder. Okay. And you, what is above... Above the E at her armpit, you, you see that? Yes, this is an associated abrasion, likely associated when the um, bullet exited E, it might have, it hit the skin and caused an abrasion. Okay. That's what we're, what we're seeing on the uh, inside of the armpit. Okay. And States Exhibit G, I mean, States Exhibit 407. Wound G. Wound G is on the lateral aspect of the right leg. It's an entrance wound. And, and the exit is on the medial aspect of the right thigh. Okay. And showing you States Exhibit 458. And that is wound F. The exit wound for G. Okay. And uh, showing you 409, is that a close-up of that wound? Yes, it is. And why is that wound so much bigger than the entrance wound? When you have um, gunfire from a, um, a rifle, there's a larger amount of energy that's um, produced because of the uh, velocity of the speed of the bullet, and so it creates a larger um, temporary cavity and the exit wounds are usually larger in size than the entry wounds when shot from a distance. Okay. And showing you uh, stage exhibit 410. Like yes, those are the fragments collected from the wound labeled B on the left side of the chest. And uh, were you able to determine the cause of death of Helena Ramsey? Yes, gunshot wound of the head. Gunshot wound to the head? Yes. I'm going to show you now, doctor, uh, for identification 21S, 21R, 21Q, 21O, 21N, 21P, 21M, 21L, 21K, 21J, 21I. And ask you, doctor, if you would examine these exhibits and uh, tell me if you recognize them.
Yes. Okay. And uh, do they truly and accurately depict uh, the autopsy you performed on Gina Montaldo? Yes, they Thursday, did. Thursday, February the 15th, 2018. Yes. Okay. And would these exhibits aid you in explaining to the court and to the jury the nature of Gina Montaldo's wounds? Yes. And would these uh, photographs, these exhibits, aid you in aid you in explaining to the court and to the jury the manner and cause of death of Gina Montalvo? Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, at this time, uh, the state would offer uh, the previous exhibits read to the record. <coughs> Okay, so noted. Thank you. Over the defense objection, the exhibits will be received as follow, follows. 21I will be received as 411, 21J, 412, 21K, 413, 21L, 414, 21M as in Mary, 415, 21N like Nancy, 416, 21-0-417-417, 21-P as in Paul, 4-18, 21-Q, 4-19, 21-R, 4-20, and 21-S like Sam, 4-21. Uh, Dr. Osborne, while the clerk is uh, remarking those exhibits, could you give us the age and the height and weight of Gina Montaldo? <laughs> if I may refer. Sure, please. Ms. Montalto was 14 years old. She was 65 inches tall and weighed 108 pounds. Okay. I'm showing you State's Exhibit 101. Is that Gina Montaldo? Yes, it is. Dr. Osborne, I'm going to show you the space exhibit now, uh, 411. 
And you have an A there next to a, what appears to be a wound. Could you explain that to us, please, sir? We are looking at uh, the anterior aspect of the left shoulder of Ms. Montalto. And here you can see the... Um, you can use one of the colors and, and if you want to do the telestrator. You, that's it. The um, entrance gunshot wound on the left shoulder, um, it goes through uh, the area of the left shoulder, it fractures the left scapula and exits on wound F. Okay. And uh, what did uh, what did it go through? It went through the deltoid muscle and the scapula, which is the um, wing-shaped bone on the uh, on the back. Okay. And here states exhibit um, four twelve. And you said F was the exit. Yes, that's the corresponding exit. Okay, and that's the exit for wound A. Yes, it is. Okay. Now I'm going to show you State's Exhibit marked 413, and you have a B there. Yes, this is on um, the anterior aspect of the chest, towards the left side. It's a large wound with uh, seared edges from the 6 o'clock to the 12 o'clock position. Uh, this wound that goes through the left fifth intercostal space, fractures the left fifth rib anteriorly. It goes uh, into the pericardium um, and obliterates the, ap the apex and the, left, the anterior left wall of the left ventricle. It exits the posterior wall of the left ventricle and then uh, goes through the left fifth intercostal space posteriorly to end up in the back muscles. Okay. And when you uh, pericardium, that's the heart? That's the sac that covers the heart. Okay. And is this wound B uh, fatal in itself? Yes, it is. Okay. Now, you talked about the seared edges. What do you mean? This um, purple-black discoloration from the 6 o'clock position along to the 12 o'clock position, um, it's a characteristic of the wounds, and we use those to give us an idea of how far the end of the gun was from the decedent when it was fired. Um, when we have the end of the gun intimately touching the skin or almost touching the skin, you can have a transfer of gases and uh, the heat from the end of the gun causing abrasions around the actual wound itself. Um, when a gun is fired, rifle or handgun, um, not only the bullet leaves the end of the gun, you have the gases that are expressed from the combustion causing the bullet to be propelled through the, uh, the barrel of the gun. Also, you have particles of burnt gunpowder that exit, as well as unburnt particles from inside the barrel of the gun and gunpowder. So if the burnt particles hit the skin, they can leave behind a black or grayish um, stain, which we call soot. Burning particles, if they hit the skin, can cause small abrasions around the wound itself, and that's called stipple. So the further you are away from the end of the gun, the more likely you are to see uh, some of these characteristics. So if the gun is touching the skin, it can maybe only leave just a searing and an abrasion. You go out a few inches to a couple of feet, you may see soot and or stipple. Beyond a certain point, depending upon the gun, the type of ammo, the gun, uh, the, uh, you'll see uh, different patterns, uh, but at some point you won't see anything at all. So then we call those wounds, we can't tell how far the end of the gun was from the decedent. So on this wound B, in your opinion, this is a contact wound? This would be contact or close, contact or clothing. Okay. Even though uh, somebody would be wearing clothes, you could still get the contact wound like that, right? You can get the heat transfer that would cause the abrasion okay. and searing if it's intimately close. Okay. And that's what this wound B shows, correct? Yes. Okay. Now showing you State's Exhibit Mark 
414. You have a C there. <clears throat> C is a wound on the left side of the upper abdomen. It too has um, a seared abrasion collar, nearly circumferentially, which is all around the wound itself. Uh, this wound goes through um, the abdominal wall. It perforates the left lobe of the liver. It perforates the stomach. It goes through her spleen and perforates her left kidney. And it goes through the back muscles to be just beneath the area designated as G on the left side of the back where a bullet is recovered. Okay. And I'm going to show you now State's Exhibit 415. Could you explain? It's a close-up of wound C. Uh, the, the searing you're talking about? Um, this m and muzzle, faint muzzle abrasion um, is the area here just outside the edges of the wound. And what's that indicate to you? That the... Uh, end of the gun, the muzzle was in contact through clothing uh, uh, to the skin. Okay. Another contact wound. Contact through clothing, yes. Yeah. Okay. And I'll show you now. States exhibit marked 417. That is a wound labeled D on the back of the right hand here. And that goes through, fractures the bones in the um, middle of the hand and exits on the palm of the right hand, wound E. All right. You know what it, what, I know, what's a defensive wound? Um, wounds that are defensive are considered wounds on parts of the body that um, someone would use to defend themselves from any kind of incoming attack. So they could be wounds on parts of the extremities from the hands to the forearms to even the upper arm, depending upon how that um, limb could be placed in front of other parts of the body, mostly the torso where the vital organs are to protect itself from incoming assault. So if somebody put their hand up like this? Yes. Okay, I'm going to show you a state's exhibit. 417. That's the exit wound E for the entrance wound D that was previously described. Okay. And Stacy did it 418, and I think you mentioned exit wound G before. Well, G is a slight contusion and dippling of the skin, which a bullet was recovered from. And that is um, the corresponding bullet for the entrance wound C on the abdomen. Okay, and F? F again is the exit wound for the entrance wound on the anterior aspect of the left shoulder, A. Okay. Uh, based on your examination, Dr. Osborne, are you able to tell uh, the order of the shots that hit uh, Gina Montalvo? No, I can't specifically say the specific order in which they, were occur they occurred. Okay. Was the, um, how about hemorrhaging in the, the track of the wound? Um, all wound tracks had some degree of hemorrhage. Um, so there's no way you can tell, for instance, that uh, A and D became, came before B and C? Um, the natures of B and C, um, if wound D is considered a uh, defensive wound, that could have come before the more contact wounds on the body. There isn't any um, distinct... Uh, already to the um, entrance wound D um, and afterwards exiting on E uh, there might be some distortion of the bullet um, however 
the wound A looks like a typical entrance wound without any irregularity, and um, wound uh, C and B um, were close through clothing. So I don't think any the hand could have gotten in between those wounds. Okay. Uh, so D likely came before the other three wounds, but I can't tell you the order in which the other three occurred. Okay. And how about the cause of death of Gina Montalvo? Multiple gunshot wounds. Okay. I'm showing you uh, State's Exhibit Mark 419. Those are the fragments collected for the um, from the back muscles associated with gunshot wound B to the chest. Okay. And State's Exhibit 420. And that was a uh, deformed um, bullet fragment that was collected from her hair. Okay. And states exhibit uh, 421. That is the separate jacket and core jacket and core of the bullet that went through the abdomen. Okay. All right, Dr. Osmond, thank you. I have no, Your Honor, I have no further questions. Thanks for any questions? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you, sir. You're excused. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I have some more questions. Okay. I I'd like to now show you States Exhibit 22I, 22H, 22G, and 22F. And ask you, Dr. Osmond, would you good enough to again, look at these exhibits? Photographs from the autopsy of Miss Jamie Gutenberg. Did you perform the autopsy on Jamie Gutenberg? Yes, I did. Okay. And would those photographs uh, assist you in explaining to the court uh, and to the jury uh, the nature of uh, Jamie Gutenberg's wounds? Yes, they would. And would those photographs uh, aid you in explaining to the court and to the jury the manner and cause of death of Jamie Gutenberg? Yes. Is there any objection? He's going to object on all grounds outlined in D and my L12. Okay. Over the defense objection, states exhibit 22F, like Frank, would be received as 422. 22G will be received as 423. 22H will be received as 424. And 22I will be <coughs> received as 425. Uh, Dr. Osborne, while the 
uh, clerk is uh, marking those exhibits. Uh, could you tell us uh, the age, height, and weight of uh, Jamie Gottenberg, please? She was 14 years old, weighed uh, 104 pounds, and was 64 inches tall. I'm showing the state's exhibit 114. Do you recognize her? Yes, that is Miss Goodberg. Doctor, I'm going to show you now stage exhibit 422. And you have that wound labeled A? Yes, this is the entrance wound on the left side of the uh, back of the left shoulder. And could you tell us about the wound track? Uh, this wound track goes through the back muscles fractures the first and second, um, left first and second ribs posteriorly, enters the left chest cavity, perforates the upper lobe of the left lung, um, perforates the body of the uh, seventh cervical vertebrae, and exits the base of the right side of the neck at wound B. Okay. I'm showing you States Exhibit 423. So this is the base of the right side of the neck. This is wound B here with associated abrasions uh, along the clavicular area. And B is the exit wound of A, correct? Correct. And uh, what damage did... The photo did... is not showing anymore. Oh, pardon? The, the photo is not showing... Oh, no, it, is, it, it went off for a second. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't know if you did that on purpose. No, I didn't do anything. Okay. No. Um, was it off? Like, it, it went off for a second, yes. Okay. Uh, good, do it again, uh, please, Doctor. Okay. B is the uh, exit wound for A? Yes, it is. Okay. And could you describe, you know, the damage that that wound, uh, that bullet caused? Um, it fractured the left uh, first and second ribs, disrupting the normal um, spatial uh, atmosphere of the left chest cavity, making it uh, difficult to breathe. It also injured the upper lobe of the left lung, causing uh, compromise of the ability to um, do gas exchange and use that portion of the lung. Additionally, um, there was 300 milliliters of blood that collected, was, was present at autopsy uh, in the left chest cavity that could likely compromised the expansion of the left lung that led to death. Okay, and what was the, the cause of death of Jamie Guttenberg? Gunshot wound of neck and torso. Okay, and why? Um, as I explained, um, her ability to use her left lung was severely compromised by the entry of the gunshot wound and the path it took crossing through the um, left chest cavity as well as uh, the injury to the spinal cord as it um, fractured the uh, seventh cervical vertebrae, um, severing the spinal cord at that, that level. Um, that would effectively... Um, Leader to not be able to use uh, any bodily fun or have a purposeful movement lower than that level. Um, and additionally, that would also affect her respirations. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Osman. Your Honor, uh, now I have no further questions with Dr. Osman. Thank you, Dr. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I guess this is going to be another early day for you. Um, we're going to recess until tomorrow. Please do not discuss the case among yourselves. Please do not discuss the case with anyone at all at home, here, in the courthouse, or on your way to your cars. Uh, if anyone tries to discuss the case with you, please tell them that you are on the jury. Please leave the person at once, and please report, report the matter immediately. Uh, other than that, please leave your notes tabs on your chairs.
and uh, have a, a nice afternoon, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you for your patience.